we have a very straightforward mandate and the Lord asked me while I prayed and prepared he says to announce this mandate we're not here just for ministry there is a very definite spiritual assignment for which he's brought us by his spirit six of them has revealed to me please follow me as we just express this and then we'll pray because this is what the Lord is going to be confirming all through our stay and time as we build and labor and this will also help you and give clarity so that we can release our faith appropriately to benefit from that which God is doing number one our first mandate in this city and in this season is to help actualize the global harvest of souls the first reason why he has sent me here is to stand in partnership alongside with the men and women of God the vessels of God in this city already doing great things for the kingdom to see to it that this global harvest that we have so spoken about that it becomes a reality Acts chapter 2 please from verse 36 media help us will run through a few scriptures it's important that we we establish our convictions upon the integrity of the Word of God therefore this was Paul speaking now after the Holy Ghost came upon them therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus whom you have crucified both Lord and Christ we're reading to verse 39 next verse please now when they heard this the Bible says they were pricked in their heart and they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles men and brethren what shall we do this were a confused people in need of salvation then Peter said unto them repent and be ye baptized every one of you no exception in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost I like verse 39 please read with me if you can see it projected ready read for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many the promise of salvation and the ministry of the Spirit the global harvest is a mission and a promise to everyone there are about 7.2 or they're about getting to 8 billion people on the earth and as far as we know my statistics may not be accurate but it's just a little over 2 billion people that we have as professing Christians and we're not talking of vetting this by the standard of God's Word are we together that means we have well over six or so billion people who are yet to call upon the name of the Lord. And I assure you, until that happens, Christ will not return. The narrative we have is that Christ will return soon, and that is true. But he's not going to return carelessly. We are people of doctrine. The Bible states very clearly the conditions that must be met for his return. It says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached as a witness. It does not have to be received, but there must be a witness that it was taken across the nations of the earth. Then and only then, the Bible says, the end will come. The church is a major determining factor as far as the return of Christ is concerned. So scripture says we can look forward to and we can even hasten the day of his coming. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 16. We'll read from verse 27. This is the doctrinal basis for why we are here. Do you know why I'm taking my time to share this? Because unfortunately we live in a world where the moment people begin to see the supernatural manifestation of God's hand and the investment of God's spirit upon individuals, usually most people do not understand the labor in the spirit that would have brought such dimension of grace and it is people will easily generalize it 
and just make it think that it's some fetish or demonic thing. We are defending the grace that has been given because we know what it will do. Praise the Lord. Graces are defended with doctrine, the integrity of God's word. Acts chapter 16, please verse 27. Let's hurry up. Media, please help us. Acts 16 and 27. This was the second incident in scripture where men would have to ask, what do we do? The keeper, this was, this was Paul in prison. When the earthquake came, there was a miracle. And the keeper, someone help me in my screen. This, the keeper of the prison awaking out of his sleep and the Bible says, seeing the prison doors opened, he drew his sword and wanted to kill himself, the Bible says. And then Peter beckoned on them. And he said, no, 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 we are safe. He cried out with a loud voice. Please, someone, can you help me walk on the screen? I'm not seeing the scripture. Let me have to open the Bible myself. Okay, thank you. He cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm. It says, for we are all here. Next verse, very instructive. The Bible says, he called for a light. And when he had come, let me narrate it very quickly. He said, what shall we do? It was a question when he saw the spectacular hand of God. The jailer came and said, I am in need of this that you have received and Peter took time to articulate the gospel and the Bible says from that encounter that man and his entire family were saved Romans chapter 10 I think perhaps is the most accurate um, theological presentation of the need the need to get the gospel to the ends of the earth but the need to find men who are hungry and available. Romans chapter 10 from verse 13. Here's what it says. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. That is the law. You cannot be saved just by good intention. You cannot be saved by an inheritance. No, that you came from a good family and then you inherit salvation. No. It says, how then, 14, shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? It's a question. Number two, and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Verse three, how shall they hear without a preacher? So it starts with their believing, but that the problem with the believing is their hearing. The problem with their hearing is there is no one to speak in the first place. And then the Bible says that how shall they hear except there is a preacher. Then it says how shall they preach except they be sent. As it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. And bring good tidings, glad tidings of good things. Let me tell you, I truly believe in the name of Jesus Christ that there will be such a move of the spirit that will bring a global harvest a global harvest it is important that men be saved look up please whether we believe it or not i assure you that one day jesus is coming and one day we are going to wrap up the activity upon this earth as much as we know the pandemic has made us to believe that it is easy to bring creation at a standstill within a moment even within a twinkling of an eye but the question now is that we cannot sit and fold our hands and allow people go to hell every day while we keep doing church, we keep playing religion, we keep making a name for ourselves. I tell you in the name of Jesus, the days of celebrity Christianity is over. God is looking for a people who are passionate and serious and committed to see kingdom come more than their reputation. This is not some sarcastic statement. The spirit of grace himself will make it happen. So this is our first mandate. The global harvest of souls. Mandate number two. 
our second mandate in this city and even in this season is equipping and building believers unto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word part of the principles or the assignment of a true apostolic ministry is to see that believers mature so we equip and build believers unto stature and maturity through the revelation of God's word Matthew chapter 28 please from verse 18 Matthew 28 and verse 18 Jesus gave us what we call theologically the Great Commission and here's what it says many of you have not taken out time to read what Jesus said he didn't just ask us to preach the gospel I read from verse 18 and Jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me the word there is exousia authority given to me in heaven and in earth 19 it says go therefore on the strength of that ability and teach nations not just preach teach nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, if it is true you are committed to doing that, I give you a guarantee that my presence will go with you. There is a guarantee. My power and my presence will go with you whilst you focus on teaching, discipling, and mentoring nations. The only way to attain unto maturity in the body of Christ is the exegesis of doctrine, discipleship, the principle, not just, not just a denomination's approach to Christianity. That people are grounded in the truth. Our spiritual vacillations are an attestation, a proof to the fact that we are not grounded challenges sweep believers left right and center and very little things make us to doubt our convictions paul said i know whom i have believed and i am persuaded are we blessed ephesians chapter 4 the bible says from verse 11 it was for this reason ephesians 4 verse 11 paul was mentoring the church in ephesus because of the overwhelming desire to mature the church he gave on to some apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers we read to verse 14 he says for the maturing of the saints that the saints now matured will do the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of christ 13 it says till we all come that means this is a possibility we can come to a state in the spirit called the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ last verse it says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness wherein they lie in wait to deceive we have to mature the body acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says they remained and they continued in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and prayer this is the formula that matures believers the exegesis of truth the communication of doctrine so that believers are grounded you can pick at random come you can pick this gentleman from a secular approach now and say for instance this gentleman wants to be a medical doctor there is already a predefined curriculum he does not guess his way around it his assignment is to effectively pass through that system are we together now give him six years give him seven years give him eight years of diligently advancing through that system the end of that advancement is that he will become a doctor there has to be a methodical approach to our maturity. The reason why there, there is a random approach to Christianity is because the mentorship systems are not defined. They are largely opinionated. They are not based on doctrine. 
so you cannot guarantee a predictable spiritual outcome a doctor in University of Joss or ABU for instance and a doctor in Unilag or UI if they come together the variance should not be very wide because it should be a common doctrine that made them doctors a, a common body of knowledge so when a Christian from this region or this place or that place when the variance becomes wide we have to examine the curriculum that was used and largely the curriculum may be based on personalized dealings this is where the tragedy of establishing believers come from personalized dealings are not a biblically approved strategy for discipleship they can be a support system when doctrine is the foundation are we blessed Two doctors who have never met, still by this example, can literally meet for the first time in a theater and not be afraid of one another. They trust their competence. Their competence is not based on their names. Their competence is based on who taught them and the standard that was used. We must raise our standard to a predictable spiritual level. If God does not pride in remaining a mystery, Doctrines systematize our knowledge of God. Are we true? So we must equip believers to mature so that as much as possible, the foundations of the Christian faith, Hebrews chapter 6, tells us about six pillars that represent the foundation of the Christian faith. We may differ in certain approaches, personality differences, that's, that's all right. But the foundations that make up the Christian faith, there are pillars. And if we deviate on those pillars, we are no longer Christians. Are we together? This is our second mandate. To help support what God is doing within this city and to mature believers. You see, in this kingdom, the message is what gives value to the messenger. The messenger is not independently valuable. The value of the messenger is the quality of the message that he has received. He says, this is the message we have heard from the beginning. What really makes us powerful is not personality. No, it is the strength of the message and the dexterity of that message. We communicate it with confidence because it did not come from us. It only came through us. Are we together? Number three, very quickly. What is our third mandate? Our third mandate as given by God in this city and in this season is to be instruments of completion and balance. This is the third mandate that we have to be instruments of perfection or completion and balance colossians chapter 1 when you read from verse 28 and 29 please give it to us media colossians chapter 1 28 and 29 he said whom we preach warning every man and teaching man in all wisdom that we may present every man complete the word perfect there does not just mean mature it means complete in Christ Jesus verse 29 it says for this cause or whereunto I also labor striving striving to reveal dimensions that need to be captured in our experience Acts chapter 2 we'll read verse 20 then we'll go to 27 and 28 Acts chapter 2 from verse 20 did I get that right I beg your pardon, Acts chapter 18, Acts chapter 18, from verse 22 to 28. The Bible talks about a very interesting man. Please look up, very interesting story. The Bible says that there was a man, 
And when he had landed at Caesarea, he went up and saluted the church and he went down to Antioch, 23. The Bible says, and after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over all the country of Galatia and so on and so forth, strengthening the disciples. Next verse, 24. It says there was a certain Jew. Look up, please. He was called Apollos. He was born at Alexandria. Notice, look at this man's qualification. Dear servants of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you have this kind of man, you will almost ordain him immediately. This is exactly what we're looking for. The Bible called him an eloquent man. Number one, number two, he was mighty in scripture. Number three, he came to Ephesus. And then the Bible says this man was instructed. So he submitted to mentorship. He was not a rebel. He was instructed in the way of the Lord. Then the Bible says he was being fervent in spirit and he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord. But he knew only the baptism of John. Imagine that that man's book was the only book you had to read in your life. You will be sound, but only knowing the baptism of John. Listen. No matter how accurate we are, we only see in part. And we communicate the part that we see. Now, the challenge for a very long time is that I think maybe because of our personalities or through our, our limitation in growth and maturity, we have mentored people into believing that every dimension out of our sphere is not necessary. So we have different varieties of imbalance. We have people who are mighty spiritual people, but they are poor, they are broke, they hate influence, and they remain in servitude. Then we have those who aspire to be great. They become mighty men, captains of industry, but they do not believe in the reality of their spirit man, their health. We have people who ignore leadership and administration, and then they are the lower levels of life. We, we have those who love these dimensions, but hate God. There is need to communicate what the Bible calls the whole counsel of God. Every dimension of God was designed to help you believers into that stature. I made up my mind as a man of God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant and do not sustain the requisite level of influence to make kingdom come happen. Are we together? Yeah. So we have many well-intentioned believers. They love the Lord. They are vibrant spiritually. But there are other weightier matters. The school fees of their children, their life, their responsibility as citizens of a territory. Because they have not been so mentored to appreciate these dimensions as also being spiritual. We have people who love God, they go to church, but do not have the intelligence and the mentorship to raise visionary children. And society is the effect of that kind of teaching. There has to be a balanced communication of the whole counsel of God. That it is still spiritual to be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit, prayer, praying in the Spirit, sound in doctrine, excellent in life you are an agent of transformation you are a visionary person they can go together you don't have to choose one at the expense of the other this happens when we help bring balance now let me say something very quickly it is easy to observe faults it is easy to observe mistakes it is easy to observe that a man of God is limited. Correcting the body of Christ is an office. Not everybody is given that office. Just because you observe something wrong does not give you the authorization to talk about it. There are people designated. The same way nobody can just arrest anybody in a society. No. There are people designated and mandated to see to it that this happens. The challenge is that several people assume judgmental standpoints and everyone is quick to show that this man of God is not teaching this, is not doing this right. It's a very wrong perspective. The first requirement to be given the grace to correct the body is love, not revelation. 
the, the zenith of transformation in the kingdom is not knowledge, it's love. And until you can pass the love test, not love for God, love for men. So that when you are communicating truth, you communicate truth from the standpoint of love, not the standpoint of hatred and sarcasm. Is God blessing us? So our mandate is to help, to support these falling dimensions in the body of Christ, to help bring balance to the body of Christ. That we come to a point of appreciation that no matter how powerful we are, the best of us is only an effective member. Number four, what is our fourth mandate? Our fourth mandate in this city is to demonstrate the reality of the love and the power of God through miracles, signs and wonders. Bringing healings, deliverance, restoration, breakthroughs to men. I believe in miracles. Oh yes, I do. I believe in signs and wonders. I believe in the supernatural. I believe that God is able to superimpose into the affairs of men and bring divine possibilities into this our world. Christianity started supernaturally. It is maintained supernaturally. If it ever culminates as far as our work on earth is concerned, it will be supernatural. To ignore the supernatural for whatever reason is a faulty understanding. We must embrace the supernatural. Acts chapter 2 and verse 22. The Bible tells us that Jesus, as our high priest and pattern man, it says that Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. Signs and wonders are a system of attestation that God brings upon a man and upon a people that they truly are sent from him. Please look up. Let me tell you sincerely, people are going through real problems. The challenges that plague people are real and whilst it is true that our primary purpose for seeking God is not things because we love him that's why we want to be like him however in the economy of God there is always a provision that whilst you seek him there are tokens there are consolations to your Christian experience there are proofs that show that it pays to serve Jesus in fact here's how the Bible puts it oh taste and see it didn't just say believe alone oh taste and see that the Lord is good Isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy from verse 1 to 3 Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 3 the Spirit of the Lord he said is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound we're reading to verse 3 verse 2 says to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord all by the anointing and the day of vengeance of our god all by the anointing to comfort those who mourn not just by skills of empathy it takes the anointing to comfort those who mourn next verse verse 3 it says to appoint unto them that mourn still by the anointing to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified say amen in matthew chapter 10 please give us verse 1 then we'll go to 7 and 8. jesus having mentored the disciples matthew chapter 10 from verse 1 the Bible says when he had called the 12 disciples, he gave them power. Mm. He gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse 7. When he sent us, listen, when Jesus sent us, he says as we go, preach saying, 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand ladies and gentlemen we were not giving just sermons alone it would be dangerous if all we were given was just a sermon verse 8 it says to prove what you just said heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received freely you must give listen in the name of Jesus this is a supernatural generation we are men and women who must trust God to host superior dimensions of his power the kind of darkness that looms around the horizon will not the devil will not bow just to stories there needs to be a real display of the superiority of light over darkness I cried and I prayed and I made a covenant with God. I said, Lord, grant by your grace that no man has to see me twice to be impacted. Once is enough. Because I read in my Bible, there were hardly times when people had to meet Jesus twice. If you met him once, that was the end of it. And the Bible says, looking up to Jesus, it calls him the author, the model, the pattern do you know what it means for all of us here and all the overflows and those following online one dramatic manifestation of the hand of God genuine sign and wonder will preach a thousand messages in one let me tell you this I said this I think while I was preaching in Roger just a few days ago and I made a statement the times that we live in now may not even allow one-on-one -on -one evangelism easily again you can be talking to someone and they can arrest you and say why are you talking to this person maybe you are a terrorist and they can go and investigate you so we need something to happen on earth listen i feel sad for the pandemic and we continue to pray and join forces with government to see that this is exited from our region however the pandemic taught us that it's easy to get the world to listen a virus that did not have publicity a virus that did not have an usher a virus that did not have music people it didn't go through any workers training it came from a small city and forced the whole world to pay attention to it now listen in the midst of that pain read the writings on the wall god is showing us the ease with which the nations can come to their knees. the pride of kings all our intelligence combined the Lord is returning us back to days these things were not parables except we don't believe the Bible that one of these days the Sun will stand still again that one of these days hailstones will come from the heavens again that one of these days manna will come from heaven again listen this is not just some motivation that a preacher is bringing no I believe the Bible let God be true and all men liars that in one day 20 dead people come back to life and while you are settling on that testimony God is doing certain things in a city that there will be no other news except Jesus glorified, Jesus exalted. I am a student of revival. I have studied a bit and I have had the privilege to meet some of the people who were mightily used by God. Let me tell you this. If we believe our talking is going to be the only tool and the only instrument to bring the global harvest, I want us to think again. Our fathers, listen please. There were times in the history of the church where people like Charles G. Finney would walk through cities just praying and suddenly things would begin to break out. The world's revival, the Azusa Street revival with the one-eyed evangelist William Seymour. There has to be a display of the power and the glory of God again. If this does not happen, I assure you someone will rise and shut the church one day. There has to be 
the jealousy of God revealed among his people one more time that I am still God I believe in miracles I assure you you will not go back home the way you came tonight I believe in miracles I believe in healing I believe that demons can be casted out should be casted out always not once I believe that God can give men speed. I believe that God restores. I believe that time is a concept that is only a mystery in the world of men. God who does not dwell whether in eternity nor we say he dwells in eternity. No, eternity is still time. It's just a summation of infinite dispensations. The realm of God is now. And from that realm, he can manipulate any other thing to square up with the counsel of his will. This is what I believe. This is what this ministry stands for. Hear me, people of God. Hear me, great city of the FCT and our global family. In the name of Jesus, we are stepping into superior dimensions of grace. One of the things that a dear prophet of God told me before he went to be with the Lord. He said, Smith Wigglesworth told Lester Sumro, he said, do not die with this anointing. When your days are coming to an end, find young men. Transfer this grace to them. Mantles are falling here tonight. Anointings are falling here tonight. Graces are falling here tonight For the kings to arise For revival to return For the kings to be born For revival to return Hallelujah Please listen to me when the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, one of the things that happened was that light came from him into me. And in a separate encounter, he told me, he said, in every city and in every nation I send you, that light that came from me to you, there must be people within that region and that territory that that light must come upon. I believe in miracles I believe in signs I believe in wonders I believe in the manifestation of the power of God as a revelation that you can look at a man and tell him be lifted whether politically whether in business listen let me tell you this listen let me say this there are veterans in business here veterans in politics can I tell you politicians here please find peace this is not the preacher that will manipulate people for gains. We don't draw people, we make them. There is a grace. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. Listen, while it is true that we continue to submit to his majesty in awe, we cannot deny what he has put upon us. It is true and it is for the nations. That you remain at the same level? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. It's impossible. You see, your life is limited by the kind and the dimension of grace that is upon you. It says, thou anointest my head with oil, but I see what is on my head by looking at my cup. It does not anoint the cup. So I look at your cup to know what is on your head. For instance, you see, every mountain is relative to the grace that confronts it. That in one day, all doors open. In one day, your destiny is shifted to it. Let me tell you this. 
there is nobody who lives what works human beings are intelligent God built us with intelligence I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I believe in miracles I believe in signs and wonders I believe in supernatural manifestations my brothers and my sisters that while you are thinking about rent God is already planning your house and he can come to you and this is listen this is this is not some motivation is his hand upon you you've taken away the sorrows away you've given me peace undeniable there's no need to fear because you're always with me you're my father my heavenly thing you've taken the pain and the sorrow away has given me peace on the night of There's no need to cry cause you're always with me you're my father my everything hear me that you can contact a grace a grace that can turn your life around these are not graces that are limited to territories. No, no. It's the workings of the Spirit. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up Come on, herald the new season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me speak already over your life that in the name of Jesus every door that stands close over your life here right here in the name of jesus by the god of heaven whom we serve inside all of the overflows across outside on the streets following from everywhere in the name of jesus that door opens now a father be open in the name of jesus christ 